Good morning. I guess it's afternoon. Um, good morning. It is So Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I am the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and we are here again for another episode. Thanks to everyone who has joined us so far. We have like a, a lovely crew of people who are waiting for it to join, which was really fun to kind of watch those numbers go up. So I'm really glad you guys are here. Um, today we are, or this month, we are talking about quilting with cuddle. It is National Quilting Month and Saturday is National Quilting Day. It's also Sew Together Saturday, which we'll talk about. Um, but the whole month is all around quilting with cuddle. Well, it's about quilting, but we're bringing in the cuddle. And so this week, we're going to be talking about machine quilting with cuddle on your domestic machine. So we have talked a few times now. I think we've actually done maybe three episodes where we've talked about using the long arm with cuddle. And that is a very popular way of doing it. But if you don't have a long arm or you want to just make a quick baby quilt and you've been wanting to quilt it with cuddle, that's what we're talking about today is how to use your domestic machine, your home sewing machine, to be able to quilt with cuddle on the back. It is fabulous. So we're going to talk about a whole bunch of things. But before we get started, then we need to tell you make sure that you share the video tag your friends share it in your favorite groups and you will be entered to win so at the end of the show we'll announce three winners and two of them um one from facebook one from youtube and one from the sharing beforehand right so if you are one of the winners what are you gonna win tell them hawk you're gonna win <laughs> this cute tote which will have some sort of a cuddle kit relative like related to today's class mm -hmm. this cute mug Ta -da. Ta -da. there you go yeah so you'll win the tote bag a kit and we'll send you the mug so um should be really good we also send you a bunch of patterns and stuff in there so it'll be a fun little uh prize to win so there are we three of those winners so make sure that you do share the video and we always appreciate you telling your friends about us so thank you thank you okay so is there anything oh national quilting month i was like there's something else i'm supposed to announce national quilting month means we're doing a giveaway so we have done giveaways in the past and this time we're doing it a little bit differently because we want to see your quilting so if you go to the shannon fabrics blog which is shannonfabrics.com blog or you go to our facebook page you'll find information on that giveaway where basically we're going to ask you to post pictures of your quilt show us the front show us the back and use um, specific hashtags and that sort of thing you can also enter via email and there is all of the details are on the blog or on that facebook post Okay, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do. I've got a bunch of things here that I've done, and um, I'm hoping it'll inspire some of you who haven't really tried it yet. But for those of you who have, I really want to see it. We're also, those entries are not just machine, like home machine quilting. They're also long arm quilting. So all of that is applicable and there'll be three different categories one is with a cotton front and a cuddle back so that would be like this sort of thing okay so it's cotton front cuddle back all right so we're doing that and then there's one that will be an all uh cuddle quilt so if you haven't seen that stick around because we'll show you some examples but i know there are some of you who did it so an all cuddle quilt so front and back is cuddle and then there's another one that will be judged on all over design. So that's all about the quilting and the design and the applique or whatever it is that you've done with it. We want to see your best quilt and that one will win a different price. So all three of those categories have different prize packages that are worth like over $500 each. They're really good prize packages. And yeah, I'm looking forward to being um, one of the judges who gets to see all of your Some pictures. of our favorite vendor partners are participating it's true. as well, right? Yep, We've exactly. We've got Sew Tights is mm -hmm. in there. Who yep. else? Yep, Sew Tights, Ulfa. Uh, we've got batting. We've got thread. We've got some free quilting for you to give away. Uh, oh. We've got some cotton fabrics. And, of course, lots and lots of the Cuddle C390 cuts so that you and I think we're doing one that has a Lux Cuddle Mirage which is our 80 inch wide Lux Cuddle so we'll be giving away lots of stuff for you to make more quilts after this so we're really excited about it I can't wait to see what you make so make sure to check out like I said the blog or the Facebook post to get all of that information and start sharing your quilts okay all right Does was that, that it is, are there size limit <laughs> requirements does that include baby blankets um, yes, I believe so, but check out the blog because there are some specific rules to enter. So make sure, like, she's got all the rules in the blog. 
I don't speak for it all. I just want to, I just want to see all the quilts. That's all. Okay. <laughs> that's all. I just want to see all the quilts. Also, I'm really just like everybody else. And I'm like, oh, look, it's soft. I just have to pet it. Um, it's just what you do. It's in front of you. You're just going to pet it. Um, so this is uh, the one that kind of started it all was this little quilt that I made because I wanted to see if I could quilt it. So I am a piecer kind of quilter. I love doing the front. I love making my points match as often as possible. Um, I really love the piecing part and the quilting part is not my favorite. So most of the time I send it off to get quilted and I do that by check. But sometimes I need it done quickly or like this is just such a small quilt that it was easy enough to do myself. So I did. This is one that I did echo quilting, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But one of the things we really love about quilting with cuddle is how beautiful the quilting shows up, how beautifully the quilting shows up on here. It's just gorgeous. And it depends on what you do with it. It can do all sorts of things. This one, like I said, was just echo quilted. So this is the design that is on the front. I just quilted around all of those different shapes to give it this look on the back. That was easy enough for me. It's a great way of doing it. Um, I also feel like it's a little bit emblematic of when I learned uh, about quilting and how to quilt, which was in the early 90s. And echo quilting or, you know, stitch in the ditch quilting was, because that's more what that is. Um, stitch in the ditch quilting was really kind of like all the thing you did. So that's what I did a lot of at the time. Uh, so that's what I'm still good at. Okay. So trying to think of, oh, I wanted to share one other thing here before we get too far. So this is the if you were with us last season, we did show notes, and this time we have new tip sheets. So if you go to shannonfabrics.com, scroll down to the bottom and go to the tip sheet section, there will be a, um, a link to this. Just click on it. Hopefully there'll be a link in the comments too, and that'll be an even easier link to click on, and you can get your own copy of this tip sheet. And this will be available to store. So if you are a store owner, this is uh, available to you. Okay, don't let me to talk about the project at the end for Sew Together Saturday, okay? All right, so if you get this one, you'll see the quilt that I just showed you. And also you'll get a lot of information that we will talk about today, but this is a great place, like before, to take notes on the other stuff that you've learned that you wanna know more about, all right? So there is that. All right, so we're going to start with the basics of how do you put this thing together okay so generally we're just going to baste it together kind of like we do with the cuddle blankets and quilts where we're just going to baste it with our basting spray i've got a little fabric here to cover my board so i'm going to move that over there so that i can baste this together i am doing a small block today that's all i'm doing it's just a little block really so we can show you how to do it that said, if you're doing a larger quilt, you're going to need a larger area. Sometimes this can get a little bit overwhelming because your table is not big enough to do the whole quilt. So um, my friend Sam Hunter from Hunter's Design Studio, she did a video a few years ago now about how to baste a quilt that's larger than your table. I think it's what the video is called. And we have a link for that that they can pop down into the comments for you. And that is a great video where she uses binder clips and a pop-up table to baste a full size quilt. So if you are wanting to do that, that is the place to go. I will say that is a great video also if you're going to put batting into a crazy eight quilt, okay? So showing how to base something that's bigger than just this little area is hard to do for me. Sam already did it. So go watch that video if you have a bigger one or when you have a bigger one to do, all right? So I've got my three layers that we're going to use. So we've got the cuddle backing, all right? I've just got a C3 here. And then I have some batting, and this is a bleached white cotton batting is what this is. We'll talk a little bit more about batting in a minute. I just wanna show you how to base this first. Okay, so you can see it's pretty darn thin. It is white, white. And the reason I wanted to use the white, white is because I have the white on the front. And the batting color will show through. So when you use one that's kind of a natural, it'll often kind of come through and discolor a white fabric that's here. Not discolor it, but 
what's the right word for that? Influence it. It'll maybe. influence the color. <laughs> yes. And usually what happens then is you end up seeing your seam allowances a lot more. So, uh, so I used a white white for this and I'm going to set this aside. Well, actually, I'm just going to flip this over. So I move things around. I'm going to take my, so that's my little mini quilt is what that is. All right. And I've got my batting and I'm going to turn this, put the batting down first and then put my backing onto it. This is the same as we would do if we were doing a uh, cuddle quilt, the stitches, a stitch and flip quilt as you go style. We would put our fabric onto the batting first and we create a, just a backing piece. That's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to fold it back. We always want to do a little bit at a time. I'm going to get my basting spray. All right, so I've got my Odif, the 505 basting spray that I like so much. There we go. Okay, so this is the stuff I like. It doesn't smell. It doesn't get your needle all gummed up. So if you have used other basting sprays and then tried to quilt with it and your needle got really bad, this doesn't, doesn't happen with this. And I can tell you I've done a few of them now. Um, and it's never, never been a problem. All right. So that's definitely something that people think will always happen with basting spray. And it doesn't with the Odeep, which is not all basting why I like sprays are created. They equal. really are not. Um, and if you have any questions as we're going, because I'm just going to talk to you for the next hour. If you have any questions, please pop them up there. And Hawk will uh, share them with me. Right. You'll do that. That's my mission. Okay, good. All right. So I'm going to spray <laughs> this. We always put our batting down first so that we can put the cuddle on top of it. And that is really because the cuddle is so um, <laughs> flip floppy that it is harder to keep it flat and put the bat batting on top of it than it is to put the batting down and the fabric on top of it. This is the easier way. You could do it the other way. You're just going to struggle a little more. So don't struggle. Just do it this way. Okay. And you so are spraying gonna... onto the C3 and not the batting right now. Correct. I will spray it onto the fabric. Partly, Part of that is because this is polyester and this is cotton. It will soak into the cotton. I almost always just spray it on the fabric anyway because the fabric is going to be less absorbent than the batting. And we're going to roll it out. Give it a little pat. The What is that? TM, the Cuddle Smackdown? Cuddle Smackdown. That's right. Nice. Thanks, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so then I'm going to go ahead and pull this back this direction and do the same thing and see if you can kind of see how much I'm spraying out there, just this thin little webbing over it. Okay, it's not a lot. You're really not trying to put a lot on here. You just need it to stick enough to get through. All right, so then I'm going to roll that up. Give it a little bit of smack. Okay, I did try the glue stick because I really love the glue stick and I tried that on part of it when I was trying to like glue based um, just a section of it. And I don't like the glue stick as much for this sort of thing when it's trying to baste another or bigger area smoothly. It doesn't work as well. This is great. So the stick is really great for applique. The spray is really good for quilting. All right, so now I've got that turned over. Now these are just one piece basically is how they're going to act. So I'm going to try to get these little bits of thread and fuzz off here they will it will show through on oh yeah here. this is a this is a time to be persnickety especially yeah. if you have contrasting threads right yeah gotcha. exactly okay so now i've got my quilt okay <laughs> it's a little bitty quilt and i've had these blocks for about 10 years now and someday I'll make them into a quilt. Can can you show us the the glue stick? You yeah. mentioned it. I didn't realize we're not using it on this project, but it's this is a new product on the market. We've mm -hmm. talked about it a couple of times briefly, but check this out. It looks like a little miniature spray can. Yep. Like a little mini me. But it is and just a glue stick. Boom. And it is the same as this in that it is it will wash out. Yes. Uh, and obviously it uh, you know has many of the same great characteristics as the spray exactly without the overspray without the overspray so when you're trying to do something that's very precise that one's better when you're doing something large this is better so same idea and i know a few stores had it have it i got mine at casey maker um there were a few other stores that i've seen have it if your if your store doesn't have it you can't find it please ask them for it a lot of stores don't necessarily know that it's out but i really love it so we want to get it into stores Okay, and if you're a store owner and you have it, please tell us. I like to send people to stores. 
All right, so now I am going to spray baste this and I'm gonna spray baste this kind of this middle section here and I'm gonna get that down. I'm gonna to try to get my seam to lay flat. But you want this seam to open up if you can. I do. Got it. You got sticky fingers now. Mm. <laughs> okay. Typical. All right, so what I did is I just kind of pressed this out. So what I wanna do is make sure that this is kind of, um, getting not stretched but taut that it's taut on here so then i'm going to come back and barb, barb says cali quilco has the glue stick available great thank you um and i'm actually going to spray here because i don't want to spray this and i don't have fabric to put there so i'm just going to spray up here just a little bit okay So I'm just trying to get it to come out. With the cotton, I notice you are actually cotton. putting a little bit more force on, right? Than, yes. than you do with the, the cuddle side. Right, yes, I really want this. This needs to be taut. You can see it wants to do this. When if I start quilting, it does that. That's not what I want. I want it to not build up. You see the difference there? I, yep, that, okay. was, that so was that's a great demo. So that's what I'm trying to do is get this to be flat enough that I could run my finger across it and it's not gonna build up. Okay, because that's where we get little puckers. Okay, so again, just kind of trying to build from the center out and make sure that it's going where I want it to. All right, so you can pin baste with Cuddle. If you really, really hate the basting spray, you can pin baste it, but it is harder because you're trying to go through the Cuddle backing, which it doesn't, the Safety pins don't really like to go through there so much. So I've found that you have to use larger safety pins to go through, which then also makes it kind of harder because they're bigger. So um, it's not my favorite thing, but I know people who do it and they use the big, big, uh, almost like diaper pins that size. And you can use those to actually base your quilt out. Then you need to be extra careful that you don't get any puckers on the back. This method really helps to eliminate puckers, which is great. Okay, so now once we've got our quilt um, sandwiched, now we can figure out how we want to quilt it. So we're going to talk about a few different ways of quilting it. Let's talk about batting first, though. Okay, so um, just so we don't lose track of that. All right, because I have a million things I want to tell you guys. So, <laughs> all right. So batting is an option. When we are working with cuddle and doing just a, like a cuddle strip quilt, a Bambino, a Crazy 8, anything like that, I always suggest that you use a polyester and I use the Quilter's Dream Poly Request is what I use for all, almost everything like that. That's what this is. Okay. And if you look at this, you can see that this is a really, it's a very flat, it's a very flat batting. All right, it's totally fine. It really works well in the cuddle stuff because like cuddle on both sides because cuddle has its own fluff. So you don't really need the extra bulk and it just kind of adds some thickness to the machine. So when you're trying to sew through those layers, if you've got four layers of cuddle because you're on a seam and a layer of thick batting, sometimes it's too much for the machine to really be able to handle very well. So a thinner batting works. You can make our blankets without any batting which means you could do a quilt without any batting. And I know some people do that. I always recommend you use a batting, but there are, are a ton of different types. This is a, um, a little card thing that I got from Pellon years ago. And here's where we wanna start. So these are all the different battings. So they've got some, some natural, natural blend, blend, some bamboo blend, bleach cotton, which is what I was using there. But then it just keeps going, okay? There's a million different kinds of batting. So this is, you know, cotton, bleached cotton, repurposed polyester. I saw the bamboo on the other side. Here's a rayon one. Here's soy wool. We also just used a silk batting from Hobbs, which worked really well. I right? really, I really enjoyed using that. It seemed very, very stable. Yes, and we did that. So that is on one of my coats, and it's at, um, it's at Casey Maker. So I couldn't show you that one, but he did, and he quilted it very tightly, and it worked really well. It has a cuddle backing, cotton front, and tight quilting, and it's still really nice and soft, which I like a lot. Um, that he did do on the long arm, though. So I will. That. One thing I would, I would say is that that silk batting is, mm -hmm. while it is incredibly thin, probably thinner than the eighty twenty. Uh -huh. Um, 
it's still really warm. It was really warm. Yeah. 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 And it worked really good for that. So there's all sorts of different substrates. I don't know any reason why you wouldn't want to use what you would want to use for your other cotton tops. Okay. I don't have any reason to necessarily promote one or another. If you don't like the crinkle, polyester is better because the polyester won't crinkle. I love the crinkle. So I want to use, I love the um, Hobbs 8020 is what I use a lot for my larger quilts. And I have a few different ones. So I did this little. That's all because the cotton shrinks, even the batting. Correct. Even just a tiny bit. A, and it's just bit. a tiny bit, but it's just enough to add a little of that sweet crinkle. Okay. <laughs> so I made this little um, demonstration for you with the different kinds of batting. So this is an old pattern that we did called cir circles and squares. And this pattern is available on our website. So if you go to shannonfabrics.com, you can find the pattern on how to make this. And it's a really fun one because it's a circle that you then fold and it becomes a square. It's basically a, a cathedral window, right? Yes, and how is it that I've already lost? There's not even a mess here, and already I've lost the pattern. Oh, here it is. It was under you. That's all. Oh, you were was, hiding it, it from me. It was me. me. <laughs> it's it, it, to totally my fault. So this is the pattern and how it looks as a full blanket. It's really, really sweet. And this one we did with cuddle for both pieces. This one I did for with cotton and cuddle. So this is just a C3. So this one here doesn't have any batting in it at all. It is just the cotton on here on the cuddle okay this one has the polyester i believe 100 percent polyester yeah mm. this is the polyester batting so you can see it has a maybe you can see it has a little poof we can kind of see from the side get a little a little poof it's pretty in there. it's pretty hard to see okay this is it gets better though okay so then this one here i can see the poof in that just a little bit this one is the uh, 8020, I believe. Yep, 8020 cotton poly batting. So it's got a little bit more poof. And then this one is wool and it's got a whole lot of poof. That one's squishy. It's kind of squishy. It's got topography. Yeah, it does. It. Even, even at the edge here, you can see how thick that is yep. compared to this one. Oh, you're, you're giving us a little peek. What's going on on the back? Can we see the back first? Oh, yeah. Thanks. Oh, there's my extra threads. Oopsie. Yep. It happens. It's a very cool little little design though. And that's really, that's the thing about using the cuddle that makes it really interesting designs. Okay, so depending on, oh, you can kind of see it when you're a little further away better. Um, but depending on how much poof you want, that's really what it is. And I'm sure that there's loft, loft. is the right word. How much loft you want in your quilt. Um, that's really where you can decide what you want. So, and how much your machine can take. So if you're using a lower end machine that doesn't really like to deal with a lot of layers, probably using the wool one is going to be too thick and it's going to rebel a little bit. So I did notice a difference in my machine and I was doing this on the crescendo and I noticed a difference in mine of how smoothly it went through and it got less smooth, I guess, as the batting got thicker. So I did at the final one, I did adjust the presser foot pressure so that it came up a little bit more so that it would slide through better. So the thicker the fabric, the less pressure you want. Okay. Any questions about batting? Are we good? I think we're good. There okay. have been some questions and, and uh, Jackie and the folks in the comments are, are taking care of business. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, if there's anything that happens on either one that you, like if you can see it on YouTube and it needs to be shared to Facebook, let me know because then we can talk about it. Did you just oh. give me something else to keep track of? Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this was another one that I wanted to show you before we get over the batting discussion really quick. So this is a, just a little project that Hawk and I had done. We made a larger one than this. And so I was making a small version. This is a wing that he drew and then I quilted it. And I quilted it with um, very, this isn't even wool. I thought it was for a minute there, but this is the extra fluffy poly. So high loft poly. It's a high loft poly. I mean, look at how thick that is. That's crazy. Okay. And I thought, oh, that'll be really cool because it'll make this wing stuff pop up really nicely. Well, it did, but it also makes this kind of wrinkly and I couldn't get it to flatten down and I didn't like that as much. I'm going to say, I, I'm, from my point of view, I like this extra texture in here mm -hmm. and I think it's very consistent. So you know, it's it's not like it's hit or miss. I mean, as soon as you start getting right. those stitches all parallel in there, it forces that texture to exist. Right. I mean, so if, as if long if as your stitch lengths are the same, it'll it'll do that. If that's something you want, 
this is how, that's how to get it. Right, exactly. And then this is what it looks like on the oh. back. Sorry, you backed okay, away too fast. <laughs> so it definitely still shows up all of that, all of that texture, which is fun. Okay. So there you go. There's your <laughs> there's your lesson on batting. All right. So now we need to start to quilt it. We're going to talk about a few different ways. So we're going to talk about stitch in the ditch, echo, uh, free motion, and straight line. So we're going to do a little bit of um, combination of things. I think we'll talk, well, actually, we'll because I have to move things around. Sorry, brain's ticking over here. Um, we have to move things around to get the embroidery foot on there to do the free motion. So I think I'm gonna show you that first. It's also my least favorite. So <laughs> we'll get that over with and I'll show you what we learned and how we did it. Um, but first we're gonna change this. So one of the things that I love about the Baby Lock Chorus and the Crescendo are the same way is that this part comes off. So it's the free arm, you know, so then I could do sleeves or circular things, which is great. It also has a ginormous table that goes with it okay it has little feet on the back okay you can see there are four little feet that you need to make sure are popped up yeah because they they do they, they fold collapse. down so For they won't storage. break off yep during storage okay and then it just kind of comes on here and come on. there's my glue stick there it goes okay and the reason I have to lift it up there a little bit, normally you would not have to lift it up, but I have to lift it up a little bit because it's on my table, okay? Um, also, one of the cool things that I realized yesterday is that these little feet on here, they spin, so you can adjust them. So I did adjust them a little bit so that it was flatter and didn't raise up at the end. So um, that was a kind of cool little- Nice. I don't know what you call those, height adjustable or something so that was pretty cool all right so this big space now is huge i don't even know how big it is we're going to measure it because i think it's super impressive 16 inches deep okay if you have a table that your machine sits in technically it's even better okay <laughs> having all of that flat space will help you a lot to be able to quilt with anything but especially with cuddle because of the extra added weight that is there so if you don't have a table like this there are a few companies who make them so steady is one i know who makes tables that will fit onto a lot of machines if you take the take it off so that it has the free arm then they'll have a um a table that will slide over it so i know they even make them for the featherweight and you can get a big huge quilting table for your featherweight as well so uh that is an option is being able to buy a an aftermarket table, I guess you would call it. So if yours doesn't have it, don't worry, there are possibilities, okay? Um, so now the first thing we wanna do is a little bit of free motion. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm not good at it. Um, so we're just gonna start there. <laughs> it's not my thing, um, but I want to show you how it works. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch my foot out and I'm gonna take off my walking foot. So I've got the digital dual feet on here and we're going to put it back, but I wanted to show you how this works. So we'll put that back on in a minute. This is the foot that I'm going to use. Okay. So there are some that are, this is an open toe and you can get them where they're a uh, full circle. I like to see where I'm going. So I like the open toe and that works for my other mission or my other foot as well. Okay. This is going to go up so that this goes over the needle screw. And this is going to get tack or stuck on with the, the side screw over here. Okay, so I'm just going to screw this in. So you can see that that little bar is above the needle screw. Let me see if I can get it to. Yeah, and it pushes it up. You see that? I'll do it again. Uh -huh. And then it comes up and it bumps it up. Okay, that's what we want it to do because it's going to come up off the fabric. Okay, so here are my very terrible examples. <laughs> because we were just trying it out yesterday. I'm gonna do a little bit to show you how, what we did. Um, and we, I say we, but most of it was me. That, I mean, really, if you can't tell, like I am fairly decent at running a long arm. And yeah. I am lousy at this part right here. This is, this is a whole different set of skills and you know, it's gonna take some practice. So. It is. So 
yeah, so doing it with the machine, we're moving the fabric. And when you're doing it the long arm, you're moving the machine. And that's a different, it just works differently. And there are definitely ways, like people will choose different ones that they like better. Yep. This isn't the one that we like better. Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean towards the long arm only because I have one. So yes. <laughs> I certainly yes. understand that if you don't have a long arm, you're going to oh. want to, you're going to want to learn this. I think my, I think I moved my gloves in there. I have to go get them. Okay. So we're going to pull this out and you can look at this and I'll talk about it for just a second here. So this is called the Supreme slider and it is a, it's just a piece of plastic with some special stuff on the back that will make it so that you can put it on your machine. It'll stick to the bed of your machine and it adds a little bit of slide to the fabric. So this is like a, a cling. Yes. It's very much like yes. a, it's like a clean, and but they it's, say you it's just really thick. Yeah, so. and then they say you use like a baby wipe on the back to keep it clean so it will keep clinging. Okay. And this little hole is going to go over where my needle goes down. Okay. So it covers up the feed dogs. I'm going to drop the feed dogs anyway. Um, but it's going to go over that so that um, my needle can still go down there. Got it. I get my thread to be longer. You bobbin, you still have bobbin access. Yes. Well, I I can well, bobbin thread access. I can't right. get to my bobbin at all. Right. So yesterday when I was doing this and when I ran out of bobbin, I was like, all right, and I'm done. So <laughs> <laughs> that was how that went. Um, I should pick it up. I hope I have a whole bobbin in there. I can't remember now. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and lift this. I'm going to put this under here and we're just going to start. I'm just going to show you how it works just a little bit. Like I said, not my jam, but I want to show you how it works. Okay. So this has this ability. So this slides a little, I will say I did it without, and it was a little bit easier with this. So the Supreme slider is not a cheap investment. So if you want to do this sort of thing and you want to invest the time into it, this would be something you could do. If you just wanted to try it out, just try it out without the Supreme slider. It's totally fine. Okay. So now this is the button I hit on my machine and that drops my feed dogs and tells it that I'm using that foot. Got it. All right. <clears throat> now so, I'm going to, maybe I'm going to jump ahead. Are you using the pedal? Oh no. And I have to unplug. Well, you can. Okay. Let's do both. Let's do both. So yes, you can use the pedal. Try to think if there was something else that I wanted to do. I did get my gloves and I'll show you those in just a second. Can all feed dogs be dropped out of the way on most machines? I think always. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I don't know of any that you can't. Okay. So we got the thread to come up and then we're just going to start and I'm just going to do, oh, nope, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't replace my bobbin, you guys. Oh, no. <laughs> she lost Sorry. bobbin chicken. <laughs> that was a little bit of a cackle, but you Im know. immediately lost bobbin chicken. <laughs> so I was like, wait, I left it there, didn't I? I couldn't remember. Okay, hold on. I have to sneak past. Sorry. Okay. Into my magic case of filled bobbins. So at least, you know, nobody has to ask me to wind it. Um, it's just there. I've talked before about these pre-wound bobbins, and I think they're the best thing ever. And they're really not that expensive at all. It's such a time saver. I mean, look at that. Bam. Done. It's great. That is super helpful. Um, so, question. What? Speaking of thread. Oh, what thread is that on the bottom? What thread is on the top right now? Um, I think the bottom is glide, but I can't remember. And um, But it's polyester. It's polyester. And then the top is actually omni-thread today. So this is one thing I forgot to mention, is that I like to use cones when I am doing quilting because I go through a lot more thread. So. And we love Mettler Metrocene, but it doesn't come on cone. No, I don't think it does. No, I'm um, pretty sure. I've, but I I've also have. I've around lately. Got it. And I have used omni-thread for a long time because I really like them. Okay, come on. All right, there we go. I'm going to keep my foot away from the pedal. All right, so now I can use the pedal. Like I even have my shoe on today. So we're going to use the pedal. What? Yeah, so we're going to use the pedal, and I'm going to do this. So if you are, I think if you're a piano player, you could probably do this okay. <laughs> because you could use your hands and your feet at the same time. I never did that. You did drive a, a manual transmission car, though. I, yeah, I know how to drive a manual. So that's similar, right? You know, this is some extra coordination. 
And this does not have a basic stitch regulator. So if the faster you press and the fast, uh, the faster you press, the shorter the stitches, the slower you move, the shorter the stitches. Right. And this is, I'm doing okay right now, keeping it the same speed. But you could hear, yep. Yeah, and it's the tiniest little bit of difference in your foot and it makes the stitches very different, okay? That's not terrible, but you could see that my stitches are not the same length at all, okay? So then I remembered that somebody had suggested, so that's why I did it first and I was like, I really just like this. And then I remembered somebody suggested that you can sew it with the button. And I think I had seen this in a video from one of the companies actually. So all you have to do is unplug the foot Okay, and now I can only sew with the button. So now we're going to sew with the button. And you, the speed control here still works, right? So you've got it right basically in the middle. Yes. Right now. So, <laughs> yeah. So you don't really want it as fast as it will go. A little slower is better. And, um, it's a little easier to keep control. Well, there's no chance of your foot moving and changing the, the stitch length. So you just have to, right, and you just have to stop moving it and then hit the button to stop it. Um, I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of hard to move this. So I do have these little gloves. I'm going to show you these because I really do like them. I think it was Angela Walters who showed them to me years and years ago. Oops, wrong fingers. They're from, uh, they're quilting gloves from Reggie's Grip is what the brand is. See if I can show you. There it is. Okay. There we go. Okay. So it leaves some fingers so that you have um, fingers to do other stuff with, like, you know, hit buttons or your phone. Um, hit record. But then these two fingers go in there. My thumb goes in there. There we go. Okay. So kind of a funky look, but this little grippy part works really well. Okay, so it's, I don't feel like I have to kind of grab it. This just grabs. So we're going to try a little bit of pebbling just to see. Oops, I don't have my pedal on. Um, so again, we're just going to hit the button to start. And you really just have to be ready to go. Well, yeah. you can see it took a second. It, it did warm up a little bit, but yeah, it's not going to stop when you stop. You have to make it stop. That was when I was playing with it. I had a hard time getting my head around the fact that as soon as I want to stop, I've got to quickly push the button with a basic stitch regulator or uh, like the long arm. Uh, it's when you slow it, when you slow the machine down, it right, it stops. It stops for you, okay. which is great. So, so it's a little bit more tricky. So here's a little bit of that. Here's what it looks like on the back. This is my white thread, and that's why you can see that. So if you were doing this and you wanted it to not show, you would use a matching thread, okay? So I use not matching thread in all of this so you can kind of see it. So let me turn all of that over, okay? So I actually really like the way that that looks in the, in the fabric. I found that, one, it got weird on me, but you end up seeing it pulling a little bit more when I'm doing meandering. And I'm not sure why, but these bigger stitches are better. Okay, so the bigger loops are bigger, so are better. So I found that the bigger patterns work a little bit better on it. Okay. Okay. So, um, but none of that would be a big deal if you had matched the thread. Honestly. No, not really. No, maybe, not the, really. maybe the little, maybe that little nest in the back. That would have, have to manage that. <laughs> I would have but, to manage but that. I'll bet that was a, I bet that was a, a, a thread breaker, a bobbin. I think so, it was. I think it was. Yeah. You could tell. I just kept going. I was like, I'm just practicing. Um, so this was another one that I did with a cotton on the back, just to see how it was doing because you can't really see the stitches in here, and that's when I realized it was doing that. Um, that's eyelashing, right? Where it like pulls it. Oh, right. Yeah, so that's, that's a tension called. issue. So now, the, hang on. So the difference between this one and this one is whether or not you you sewed it with the cuddle up or the cuddle down. No, this one doesn't have any cuddle on oh, it at all. Oh, cuddle on it at all. So I thought that was interesting because it seems like I can't see anything in there where it did that on here so much. There's a little bit. Oh, yeah. So this is something that I would need to fix to figure out my tension issues on here and why that's doing it. It really only does it on curves and it's when you go too fast. All right. So 
um, as with anything, you need to make sure that you practice some with the fabric or the type of fabric that you're going to use so that you can figure out what it's going to do and if you have to make adjustments. Okay. All right. Any questions on the free motion-y sort of thing? I have a great note from Sherry. Okay. Uh, why wouldn't you set the speed slider to middle and press the foot all the way down? It'll only go as fast as the slider's set. Yeah, you totally could. That actually would really yes. help. That, but yeah, so that's what I but yes that's what foot, I did. Yes, slider. So that's what I did when I was practicing yesterday. Whoopsie. Um, but what I found is that it was still too fast for me. I still not too fast, was too fast, but I didn't have the continual push down. So that's what it's set at right now is medium. Okay. And we have the pedal plug back in. I have the pedal in. back in. So. It seems very fast. It seems very fast. And then if I, sl I can slow it down a little more. Let's say it's, it's, it's so there. Can... The control's there, but it's, it's, you're going to have to, to fuss with it a little. It's a little that's finicky. a little better. So that's just below halfway for me is good, but it doesn't click in place. I have to adjust it. Got but, it. You know, it, now it's a race. Yeah. And now we just end up with teeny tiny little stitches is what we get a lot. Wow. Super fun. Look, that's how well I drive. Um, <laughs> you drive great. And, but then if you do it fast, you get these big, huge stitches. So that's all. So, you know, if you're moving it slower, you get teeny tiny. And if you go faster, you get these big stitches. So that's the thing is it doesn't have a BSR, a basic stitch regulator. Some machines do. My baby lock does not. When I had the um, Bernina, the Bernina had a BSR. And so it. you could absolutely use that. That's a little bit easier, but this is one way of dealing with that. Okay. So now let's go ahead and take this off. And I'm going to move this back down because I do want to on a quilt slower and I have to force myself to do it. Okay. So again, this is the foot that I used for that. That's the okay. The Just an embroidery foot. Embroidery. And, and so what, what exactly does that, the whole spring mechanism on there do? Why, why is that so important? In the... uh, because it, it pulls the, it pulls this up. Got well, it. It's upside down, but yeah. So when it comes down, it lets this have some bounce. Okay. Because this is Got what it. would stay. This stays solid and this foot bounces. Okay. All right. So then I can take this off as well. And I'm going to put that right back into the case. Whoopsie. The case is a piece of paper, but it will keep it from getting dirty or having hair stuck to it forever. Okay. All right. There is that. All right. So now I'll put this guy back on there. I'm coming around. Okay, and I was going to mention this today, that you should always make sure, are you going to plug that in? Okay. I'm helping. Thanks. Is that when you change the foot, always give it a little tighten with your screwdriver or whatever it is that you have with your machine. This is the one that comes with my baby lock, and it works really well. I was working on um, some stuff the other day, and my foot wasn't screwed in perfectly well, and it took me three needles before I figured out that my foot was moving and my needle was hitting the foot when I was sewing. So make sure that you're, you've got it tightened down real well so it doesn't have a little wiggle in there. All right. Okay. So now we can tackle this guy. So normally you're, um, you want to use a walking foot for this because it'll work much better. And your walking foot will usually come with the standard foot, which is a closed toe foot. And you can often get an open toe foot. Some walking feet will actually come with different soles, which is really nice. This one is a separate purchase on a baby lock. And so I have this as the open toe, and that way I can see what's coming ahead of me. With this one, I cannot. So I use this a lot of times so you guys can see better. But in quilting, I definitely use it so I can see better. Okay? So I want to do that. When you are quilting this, we kind of want to tackle a way that we could keep quilting.
So we'll talk about that more is that we want to do less ending in here than, you know, we don't want to like stop and start all the time. That will, your starts will pull out. So even if you backstitched, sometimes it'll cause issues and your backstitches will show. So we want to kind of start and then just keep going. So what we want to do. All right. But we do want to start in the center so we can make sure that it flattens out here and anything that grows will grow out from the center. All right, so that's different than when you're quilting on a long arm. So I'm going to start here in this edge and we're going to do a little um, stitch in the ditch basically. And I'm just gonna stitch around this and we'll do some other little stitching. And then if you guys have any questions, we'll answer them. So I have it set right now at a 3.0 and I'm gonna see what that looks like when it is stitching, if I like it. Why is it remove dual feed? Oh, I know. Sorry, I had to push my button to get back to. Oh, we had to. Yeah, we're we still on a. The feed dogs were down and out. Right, I still thought we were going to do that. I don't want to do that. Okay, so now I'm just going to come along here and I'm just going to stitch along this edge. So I will do all of this a little bit slower so that I can see where I'm going and not push the fabric. The faster you go, the more likely it is to push things along. And we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it right along that edge. And my the little gloves here give me some, some push so that I can just push along the top here and not have to uh, grip the sides, which makes it a little bit easier. I noticed things got a little trickier as, we got, as I got near the edge and I didn't have as much to hold on to on one mm -hmm. side. Um, so that's another reason to what, sort of start in the middle and work your way out. Yeah. Uh, gives you a chance to kind of get used to what you're doing. Right. And it's partly why, because when we were doing that, there was no, you didn't have four inches to hold on to, right, right. on the side. Right. So it's important to still have that extra bit that you can hold on to. Um, once you've got over here, I've still got a little that I could, I could hold as I get there. Okay. So now I'm just going to come up here and I'm just going to follow along the edge. So this is a pretty, uh, no brainer way of doing it. It is definitely how I have done many, many, many quilts in my life. Then um, I found out that you could pay people to do it for you. And I was like, done. <laughs> so that's how I do all of mine. I'm going to backstitch one because I went too far. And we're going to come back over here. All right. So the only time you dropped the feed dogs out of the way was when we were doing free motion. Now that the walking foot is back in place, the feed dogs are back up and doing their job, yep. right? Yep, Got so it. we're using the feed dogs on the bottom and the walking foot on the top to keep both layers going at the same time, okay? So that's why walking foot is really important because you've got a lot of layers here bringing them through and it will help immensely to have that. So I'm gonna do um, one more round here and then I'm gonna come back and then we'll take it out and I'll show you guys what that looks like, okay? So this is pretty easy because you can really kind of just follow with your eyeball where you're going. There are uh, the stitch in the ditch foot that you could absolutely use for this. It would not work as well for you guys because you wouldn't be able to see, but um, you can use that when you're quilting along. And I'm trying to stay on the white, but I just came off just the tiniest bit there. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back along here. So really at this point, you can kind of do whatever quilting you want. And you could add some fun stuff in here if you wanted to, if you want to get creative. So like one of the things I was thinking is that you could come and you could probably like, we could stitch in here and kind of stitch down like this if we wanted to. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, so you could add some fun things in there. You could stitch between these. I like to stitch the actual shapes themselves, um, but it turns out really nice on the back. So let me show you what that looks like. Does okay. that open toe foot only fit the 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 uh, digital dual feed, or does it fit regular feet on this machine also? Uh, this this is only for the digital dual feed, but okay. I do have an open toe foot that works on my machine as well. And like I said, most walking feet will have some sort of an open toe because it's what's used for decorative stitching, and that's usually what this is for. So, but I like it because it lets me see. Now, what I was going to show you. Is you can see, can you see the like drag lines from the feed dogs yes. that are kind of like mirrored? Um, and really, you can just kind of swoop them up and they'll go away. Oh, okay, poof, gone. 
but it'll, they'll sort of show up a little bit. It's just because they've dragged along the feet. Yep. Okay. But look at how pretty that is. It looks gorgeous. So if you can get a straight line, you're doing all right. Um, okay. So try to think of which way we wanted to go. Oh, so another thing that I wanted to tackle with this, we don't have, um, I don't have any straight lines to do on this one. This one. Oh, okay. So these were different batting. So this one, I'm just going to do a big shape in here. We'll see what happens. Um, this one is a cotton batting in here with polyester on both sides. Cuddle on both sides. Got it. Yes. Cuddle on both sides. Yep. So I'm just going to do some stitching. I'm not sure why I started in it all, but that's where I started. Because we're playing. Yeah, because we're playing it, and it doesn't you, matter. You, you, got, you got to be able to play right now. Like this, this learning process, like I know from learning how to, trying to learn how to long arm that if, if you start thinking you're going to have a finished product the first time, you are likely to be disappointed. Right. <laughs> you got to put some, got to put some feet miles in. Yeah, exactly. And we're just trying to see what it will do. Um, the reason I chose to do it this way, to put the cuddle on two sides and then a cotton batting in the middle was because I wanted a little extra poof loft. I wanted a little extra loft. So we're going to see what that does because we know what cuddle on cuddle looks like with polyester batting. So what does it look like when you use cotton? And I could already see the difference in the amount of loft that's there. Can you see that? That it has like it actually has a little bit of a little. Oh puff. yeah. Okay. So that would be it's, something you could like absolutely sculpted. do. So it almost cool. is. So this is yeah. You can really see it on the camera, which is great. So it definitely has a lot more poof to it, and that's really because it's the cotton gets smushed down, so all of this stays that thick in there and in the polyester it's much thinner it's like half that so it doesn't have that as much so you can absolutely just quilt up two layers of cuddle and it becomes a beautiful little blanket all right either side of those are really nice okay i love it all right we're just experimenting today and this one was i don't think you have um i don't think we have a banner for it can you say the name of the glove brand again reggie's grip is what they are okay um, and I really do like them. I have tried a few different kinds. The first one I tried was the, uh, the hack that people say that you can just use gardening gloves and like cut off a couple of fingers or something, cut off the tips of the finger. I can't remember what the hack is. I tried it and it was terrible. It did not work for me. You might love it. I didn't like it. I like these because they are now my fingers. Like I don't have to try to keep the gloves on my hands. They're not loose at all. So that's something that I really love about this. Uh, so this one is cotton and um, cuddle on the back. Okay. And I'm going to do a little quilting on this. And we're going to see what that puff is like. And I'm just going to do a little kind of echo here. Okay, so one of the things when you're doing the straight line is that you can use the foot as kind of a help. So I'm using the inside of this toe to run my the orangey fabric right along that and keeping an echo. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's it's not it's not actually stitch. You're not actually stitching in the ditch. You're actually right inside of that, and it, that's intentional right now. Right, and I can kind of just keep that line, watch that line, and see how it works. Um, so yeah, that looks like it's going okay. I'm gonna add another. So then I can do it so that it's the side of my foot. Get some other little lines in here and we'll be able to see kind of what the, what the loft is. Okay. Pretty soon you can start to see about how big your your foot width is. And I like these because it's pretty big. Okay, and you can see it moves through just fine. And the other thing is you'll notice that we haven't had any shifting. So all of these are really just basted the exact same way that I showed you. I said I just spray basted them, stuck them together, and it is not moving from the outside. Not a Nothing. not a flower head pin in sight. Not a pin in sight. Exactly. 
Okay. Did you bring the bobbin thread to the top? I did not because I just started at the edge. So if I you're starting in the middle, you should bring the bobbin thread to the top. When I'm starting over here, it's going to get trimmed off when I do my binding anyway. So Got I it. don't care. Um, so you can definitely see it adds it adds some poof to it there. Okay. Oh, so if you fine. really want it's the rigged. design to show, that's a great way of doing it is with a cotton batting in there. And this is 100% cotton batting. And so you can see this one is even thicker than that other one. Okay. Got it. Okay. Look at all that experimenting. All right. So now we'll come back around to the front. We'll talk over here for a second. Okay. All right. So now we've got all of that done and we can see how it, how it works. Now for me, the hard part is always, how do I quilt it? What do I do? Like, as you can see, I'm like, burr, 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 do, do, do. like I'll just oh, meander like, around. What's like, the mo what motif? What's motif? Like, oh, what yeah. am I actually going to like, put on it. So the echo quilting or the stitch in the ditch is really has always been my go to because it's really easy. I don't have to think about it. I just follow the lines. And it's real pretty on the back because it looks kind of like the front. But you can do more than that. So um, one of the uh, don't let me forget to talk about this at the end. Um, I had a reason why I brought it out. I oh, this was actually related to a question somebody had. Do you use grid rulers or some of, or any of the grid rulers to, to draw straight lines? Yeah, but that's not what that's for. Okay. So I will talk about it, okay. but that's not what that's for. Okay, um, okay so this <laughs> was a quilt. <laughs> I know, so many questions. So this was a quilt that I did a few years ago, maybe three or four years ago. This was a pandemic quilt. 21. Um, I did it in 21. And uh, so, yeah, this was part of the American Travel series that I did of quilts, which will continue. But it is... Does this so it is all cotton on the front and then I quilted it with cuddle on the back. Okay, can you see that all right? Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it in here. Whoa, sorry. All sorry, right, that was right there. <laughs> it was right there. <laughs> okay, so what I wanted to what do, do you is mean you couldn't see through the quilt. <laughs> no, it's really thick. Um, so what I wanted to show you was how I did this with and I did straight lines and then it's between those. All right. I got this idea from this book by Jackie Gehring, and I really wanted to recommend this. If you are interested in quilting your your quilts on your domestic machine with a walking foot, this is the book to get. She has Walk 2.0 as well, which is more ideas even, but it is a fabulous book for showing you a whole bunch of different ideas on how to do it and then explains exactly how to make your way through it, which I think is fabulous. Okay, so I really, really like this book because I <laughs> don't always know how to quilt it. And I have done it with cuddle a couple of times now, and I've done it with cotton a couple of times, and everything has worked out beautifully. So the straight line quilting is particularly great for cuddle. I yes. Feel, I feel like I, I need to read this book. Yeah, you might. Yeah. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Jackie okay. Gehring is fabulous. You can visit her website. You can see some of the quilts that she's done. She is just an amazing uh, quilter. She lives here in Kansas City as well. And her book is well worth getting if you want to do this sort of thing, because it will walk you through all of those steps of how to do it if you're kind of at a loss. So, and you can see it looks beautiful on the cuddle side. It looks great on the cotton side as well. And this one, I will show you. So this is something we get questions about that we'll just tackle right now is binding. So I prefer to bind my, or I prefer to hand stitch my binding. And if you sew it onto the front, you have to bring it around to the back. You have to hand stitch it to the cuddle. If you look at this, you can tell I did not. This is the machine stitch side. And then I hand bound it to the front. Okay. So that is just my personal preference. You could absolutely bind this with cuddle or cotton. Absolutely. And um, either one is fine. But I like to sew it onto the back and bring it around to the front. And then I hand stitched it down. So, and I do that on several of them. If you don't like, you know. If you don't like hand stitching your binding, Linda White, um, <laughs> if you don't like hand stitching your binding, you are absolutely fine to machine stitch it and you could machine stitch it either direction. Um, I think you have more control if you do it the other way. All right. So that is straight line quilting. Okay. And then we're going to do, I think we're doing all right. Um, okay. We're going to go a little over an hour, you guys probably. Uh, oh yeah. We're already 20. over now. I know. We're just it's little. Fine. Okay. Fine. So this is one that I started. Okay. Sorry, there's cuddle dust. I don't know where it came from. 
So, um, so this is when I started. So unexpected. And so unexpected that I started with um, using one of the ideas in that walk, which was to combine a straight line and wavy lines. So wavy line quilting was a really big thing for a while. Matchstick quilting was a really big thing for a while. Um, Crosshatch, like they all kind of go through popularity, but you kind of pick and choose what you want to do. So this one is a combination of both. And I did straight lines and I did wavy lines and I did them from the front and I did them from the back. So that was the fascinating thing for me. So I really, I like the way this is turning out. This is an old panel from Robert Kaufman. It is no longer available. So don't ask me where to get it. Um, I got it when I worked for them in 2012 or 2013. So it was from a long time ago. Um, I've just held on to it. It's been aging in my stash. I feel like it's come to maturity and I can now use it. Like so a fine wine. Like a fine wine. Exactly. So if you get, I don't think you can see it. Come in a little closer so you can kind of see the wavy and the straight. So there are some straights, there are wavies. I kind of moved them around, sewed over each other a little bit. Okay. And then you can see it from the back. And again, I did use white thread so you can see it. But what I found really fascinating is these curvy stitches here were all stitched from the front and the straight lines I did from the back and the straight lines sunk in more than the, like, I think the ones sewn on the back sink in more than the ones sewn on the front. So if you're not trying to match any sort of a pattern on the front and it's gonna be an all over sort of an edge to edge design, you could technically sew it so that the cuddle is facing up Exactly. And that's what we'll do. Well, I'll show you one more, um, okay. one more line on this. So yeah, absolutely. You can stitch it either way and it works out just fine. This one is stitched. Um, it's sewn sideways because that's the way my nap went for my fabric and that's totally fine. It doesn't affect this because I'm not sewing nap to nap. Um, what was the other thing I was going to tell you? Oh, and if you get in here and you look really close because when it well when you'll see i i moved um but the other thing is that i don't have any red popping up there's no bearding in there's, this case there's none and i was really trying to figure that out and so when hawk and i were discussing it last night and i think that part of it might be that the tension is so much higher on a uh, long arm that it kind of pulls the nap up more so i also chose the red specifically because i thought it might show through because i do have another quilt can you get that one down there? So you tried yeah. to force the issue with I the tried bearding. to force the issue. And, okay, because, so I'm, I'm, I'm multitasking here, folks. Yeah, sorry. Um, because I did have this one done. So this was a quilt done uh, by my friend, the uh, quilting nerd. Um, and she did this one for me with, I think this is cherry on the back here. So this would be another example where I brought it to the front. I actually just machine stitched it down. But this one, you can see the red coming through. Oh, yeah. Okay. And this and was the same size needle. So she also used a 14 because we had her shrink the needle. Um, and so the, really the only difference is this is white, white, and that's pink. But still, I would think I would be able to see it through. So I don't really care that it looks like this. It makes those little I love yous show up all the more. So it doesn't bother me at all, but you can see it's there. And if you do that to this quilt, you can't, it doesn't do that at all. Right. There okay. you go. Okay. So there's that. Bearding's a thing. It doesn't bother me, but it does definitely bother some people. And and different weights of batting haven't really seemed to be the issue at all either. Nope. Um, though I will say that I have noticed more bearding when we use Lux Cuddle on the back than yes. obviously the C3. Right. And that completely <clears throat> makes sense just yep. because it is. Um, the longer nap. It's a longer nap to come through. Okay, so I don't have very much room in here because I have my huge table. But what I want to show you is how I can do these lines on here. So I'm going to try to get this so I can get as much on here as possible. So this is uh, the back of it, obviously. And I'm going to do another straight line. So the way that I did this was I did some straight lines. And then I came back over from the on the back. And then from the front, I did the wavy lines. And this is why. is because on the back, I can mark those straight lines really well. How do we mark this? Oh, Let this is super you. fun. Okay. So we use my favorite tool by any stiletto. Okay. And then here is my big long ruler. That is a that is a, a it is 36 a, inch long ruler. It's a 36 inch long That's ruler. That's amazing. So this one is from Olipfa and I can't remember who makes the other one. 
I can't remember, but there's another 36 inch ruler out there. Is it, uh, oh, no, I think it's Quilter Select. It's Quilter Select. It's Quilter Select. They make one that's two and a half by 36 inches. It's great. Buy it so they keep making it, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. And um, yeah, it's fabulous because you can get so far on the cuddle and you can actually cut the whole half width of a cuddle off the bolt that way, which is fabulous. So what I'm doing is I'm taking one ruler. So this is my quilter select and I wanna make it a certain distance. So this ruler is four inches. I wanna make it eight inches away. So I'm gonna line this one up on my fabric and it's not gonna move cause it's got that grippy on the back. All right, and I'm going to line this ruler up next to it. And then I'm just going to drag my stiletto on there and it's going to show my little line. Oh, wow. Well. Okay. Did you, you just, see you that basically, okay? yeah, you just fluff the nap up. Basically. It just kind of fluff is, fluffs the nap up. Exactly. So I'm going to move this up so I can get the rest of it. Then I'm just going to do the same thing because if my table were bigger, I could do this in one fell swoop. But I, I feel like there's, there's, there's an imminent disaster. Yeah, there, there probably is. Yeah. We're going to try. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. Put my, Put my ruler here, bump this up to it so I can get eight inches. Come back up here. Oh, yeah, right. The Very Army grid makes the foldable 36 inch, which yes. is great for travel. Which is Definitely great. Definitely have seen that ruler and feel like it should probably be in our travel kit. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to quilt it. So the reason I wanted to show you a little bit of this one is because it does get more when you're doing a bigger quilt okay right it's 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 cheating when you're just like showing us all these right. awesome little techniques on like a block things. no biggie yeah <laughs> when you're doing a bigger one it's a little more so part of it is that you want to keep it so that you are at your um machine and you're not really like having to bend over too much so having a good you know pillow under your seat or whatever is important so you're just using basically a bar stool. I'm using a bar stool because it sits up higher anyway. And we have this table up higher than many people's sewing tables also. Exactly. It's also to basically standing height. By the way, this is a super cool table. This is a Husky. We got it from Home Depot. And it if you crank it up, it, it, it does. cranks, it raises and lowers. It's, it's pretty cool. It's lovely. Yep. Okay. So now once I've got this here, the hard part for me with this table is that I don't really have a lap. So I have to kind of sit here and put my feet up so that I have some sort of a lap for my quilt to go on. Because the more I hold this up, the easier it, it goes through. So you see this? And then if I drop it, it doesn't pull through as easily. All right. So the less weight I can have on it, the easier it is. So I have found that kind of holding it up and letting it feed through works really well with this machine. You're floating it. I'm just kind of, yeah. I'm just kind of floating it and it works really nicely and it's better than this because shoving it through the machine doesn't work very well so using the um do you have the walking foot lever up what do you mean i don't know does it look like it's not working no i was just i was just reading a comment oh got it it may have no been it's down it's down got it sometimes got it oh yeah if it's up it disengages the belt hang on here we go so this around. is what we want is that the um the thing is against the belt it's going to engage the belt this is disengaging it got it and we I don't want to disengage the, the belt there. okay so we're just going to kind of let this go all the way through and i'm just going to keep doing these lines one after another okay i'm not going to make you stick around for all of that i just wanted to show you one so this is probably about the largest I would want to do. I don't even know what this is, 36 by 45 or something. Um, really baby size is kind of it. Bigger than that, it gets a little bit harder. There's another really great tool, which I should have found a picture of to show you guys that you might have heard of called the weightless quilter. And it is a contraption that holds up the four corners of your quilt. And I know that um, Dawn talked about it at the Sew Together Saturday when we did embroidery and you can do you can do edge to edge quilting on your embroidery machine. And if you hold use that weightless quilter, it holds up all corners, kind of like I'm holding up these two corners. It holds up all four of them and it like bends and sways like a willow tree to keep your quilt up. Works really well. Oh. OK. So, yeah, I have not seen this. It sounds it, fascinating. It's pretty cool. It came out years ago and um, I've never had the chance to work with them 
but I know that a few people have and they really love them. So, so there we go. You can see how deep this digs into that. And it's really, it's fascinating to me that it does that, that you just can't see the thread at all. Right. It, um, that when you're, excuse me, when you're sewing cuddle up, it just buries it. Right. It, it actually buries the, the stitch all the way down. Okay. Got it. And then there's my stitch on that side. And again, there's no, no little bearding coming through. Love All it. right. So doing a bigger quilt, you really want to have some area. Uh, when I've done, when I did that quilt, the brown quilt, when I did that one, I did it at the kitchen table and I put in the, what do you call the middle section? The leaf. I put in the leaf and made it as big of a table as I possibly could. And then I pushed my machine back. So you'll notice I pushed my machine back on here too, so that I could have a little more room. And when I did it at home, I pushed it in so that I could I kind of had to lean into my machine a little bit, but it lets more sit up on the table and less pulling down. So make sure that if it's, if you're having to kind of pull it through at all, you really should try to figure out a way to take some of that weight off of it because you want to let the machine do its job and pull the fabric through. And if it's fighting it, it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be as nice. All right. So that's a project to actually finish. I really do want to finish that one. Okay, so then we want to talk about one more thing, and that is curving. So on that one, you might have seen there were a couple little areas where there's a little ka-chunk. Every time that you stop your needle, it has a, a chance of moving just slightly. And so really trying to get that whole line across the whole way is really important and not stopping. When you stop, it just seems to always move slightly and I can't see where it was behind so I can't get it perfectly lined up and every time it'll leave a little chunk. That is extra important when we're doing curves. So this is one that we're I'm going to show this is a cheater cloth which is super popular these days and um is really fun for quilt coats. So I did uh this one using the juicy juice are we coming around? I'm coming around. I use the I use the Juicy Juice print, which is the Winding Ways quilt block, which is seriously one of my favorites. And then I just went and I quilted around all of the circles. So it ends up being like this on the inside, where you can see all of that Winding Ways pattern. Should I take it off? You can see it, okay? Oh, I see it just. Fine. Okay. Great. So that was how I made this. So this is the my elemental coat pattern. And I really wanted to see how it would work with a cheater because I was like, you know, this is the easier way of doing it. And somebody had asked me, could you line it with cuddle? And I thought, I think you could. So I really wanted to just try. So that's what I did. And I quilted it. It turned out beautiful. Everybody loves it. If I'd known how much I loved it at the end, I would have quilted it with navy on the bobbin because I quilted it with white and you can see it. So got um, it you know, practice and then go ahead and use the good stuff. And, and so. also I, I, I will notice, uh, I'll make a note is that, that you can see a little bit of the batting, all right? Or, or, on yes. a couple of spots. Uh, and yes, uh, and I could have used a dark batting. You could have used a darker batting. They mm -hmm. make that too, right? Yep, exactly. Well, that's fine. Exactly. I, I've seen so. some, I've seen like black batting before. It's yeah. kind of a specialty product, but it's right. totally, but it's totally findable. So the thing that I learned from doing all of that, because I'm quilting all of these big hunks for it, is that the curves are actually pretty darn easy. You just really need to take your time with it. So I have this one. This is a double wedding ring, cheater cloth from uh, Riley Blake, I believe. And then I've got some navy cuddle three over here. So you can see those. So what I wanted to show you was how I quilt this. So when you're doing these circles, the thing to do is to kind of see if you can follow me around here is to do this kind of figure eight thing. Oh, right. So you never stop. It's very okay. much like kind of what almost like what you do when you're doing pebbling. Right. right. And that's really what I did here. You can you can see like I started here and then here and then here and then here. And then I came back up and around and around. Right. So you're not chasing one circle all the way around. Right. Because then you don't have to actually start it and end it. You just keep going. So you're trying to start and end at edges as much as possible. And that's what we're doing. So that's what I'm going to show you here. And what I have found oh, come on. is... Varying threads is my favorite. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch this. And we're just going to follow this curve all the way around and see what happens. Okay, I'm pretty sure I know what happens. It's gonna look like a quilt, which is great. Okay, so I'm just going to follow along just outside that line, just like I did on the other one. 
and I'm actually going to put my gloves back on because they do really help with this part. Because this one, I'm actually steering the fabric a lot more. I can't just let the machine take it like I did with the straight lines, where I kind of just held it up and then made sure it was going in straight. And yeah, it you can't just really go. float this one. I can't do that here. <laughs> so I actually have to use the little gloves. And I found when I was doing that, that coat, that was when I was like, oh, these are kind of magical. I love these gloves. <laughs> I've, I've, I've worn them and used them as well. And uh, they, they are. They're, They're really great. lovely. So as I was saying, you shouldn't start and stop on a curve, but I just did because I needed to put my gloves on. Um, <laughs> but if you can, we'll see if we can see that later because that's where you'll be able to see the goofs. Okay, so then I can stop, pivot just a little, get it going on this curve and come around. What's, taking your time with it is fine. Can um, yeah. can I ask a question? Yeah. Great. Um, monofilament. Yes. On the top, especially. You absolutely can. I used to use monofilament all the time. I don't use it as much now. I kind of like to um, have the thread do something fun up there. But you can absolutely use it. We have used, we used the superior threads, I believe, was the one that we liked the best because we tried out a few of them. Right. Um, and I think I, it was superior. That I we liked certainly the best. used it on the long arm quite a bit uh, yeah you used it on the um the lone star elemental right yes yeah and that was the one with the silk batting and it's because we were going over a lot of different colors it works really really well and did i, I just haven't... go around the cor corner because we were talking yeah probably i don't know I oh no that. i didn't okay, okay good i did it right <laughs> i certainly wasn't paying attention I'm trying to read the, the hundreds of comments that I know I haven't gotten to ask you yet. <laughs> Questions I haven't gotten to ask you yet. And I'm just trying to trying to follow what I said I would do. If we have not answered your question on I'll the show, back. we will swoop in after the after uh, we're done today and make sure all of your questions get answered. Because yes. I know there have been a bunch of them, and Jackie's doing uh, doing a ton of work trying to make sure that those are answered, and um, we'll swoop in too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so now I'm at the other end. So that's what I did. So I did do the S and now I'm at the other end and now I'm going to swoop back. So I do try to stop every time where there's a straight part because you do have the jags, but you know, you do have to have to stop every once in a while. But if I can be smart about that, just thinking ahead a little, it's, it's helpful. Okay. And really, this is the fastest I've ever been able to put together a double wedding ring. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so cheap. And it's such a cheater. It's great. There's a ton of them, too, that are coming out. There, Riley Blake has a bunch. Moda has a bunch. That's right, Lauren. No quilting police. No. None. Not here. Okay, I'm going to zip across there again. And we're going to come back up the other curve. So these are bigger curves, which is nice. Um, on the winding ways, they were definitely a little bit tighter. You could also go in there and really, you know, quilt between the little bits here and make it even more quilty if you wanted to. Thanks for reminding me, Cotton, for me. I know what that was. I'll make sure she talks about it. Okay light up ruler oh yeah yeah okay <laughs> was that sneaky Thanks. not sneaky uh, hot mic okay <laughs> <laughs> all right so then what i did i was trying to figure out how i could get it so that i could quilt the inside here and not have to stop and i think the only way to do it is to come in here pivot and then sew around does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So as part of this is like trying to figure out what you could do. So like this one needs to be quilted too. So there's going to be some parts where I'm going to, I'm just going to end up having to start or stop or go over lines. Who makes this and again? By the this, way, is this, is, this is Riley Blake. This is Riley Blake. Yeah, it's a Lori Holt fabric. But let me show you from the back. Yeah, I want to see. So you can start to see oh, these yeah. like orange petals coming in here. Okay, and how that shows up. So pretty. And it's so interesting. And you can actually do it really quite well from your machine. I so look and I think that might be the spot that I stopped. I think there's one right there too, but like yeah. I'm not being picky. But once you swoop the the nap, you can't really see it. Yeah. 
Okay, so there is, that's the very big overview of quilting. Okay, so the one thing I wanted to show you was this little um, tool. There's a couple other quick things I wanted to show you. Um, so we wanted to talk about this. This is the glow ruler. And I used this when I was doing the uh, circles and squares. This is by far the fanciest ruler I have ever seen. Yeah. And so I love it. I love it too. So this <laughs> was done with the AccuQuilt. I cut out the circles on the AccuQuilt. And then I cut out, I used charm squares, so five inch squares for these. And then I cut out five and a half inch squares of batting. And I used this little guy because this has this super cool function of actually uh. lighting up. So oh. <laughs> it helps you see things really well. I think I heard angels. Okay. So if I turn it off and then I turn it back on, you can see the difference in just the visibility of being able to see what your numbers are doing. So what I like too is that it's easier to see on things. Come on. You got to push it hard. Hold it. There you go. Oh, there we go. All right. User error. So on something like this, it's a little bit easier to see with those lights in there than it is without them. So I have a hard time seeing these lines. They can get lost in certain patterns. Yeah, but they're really easy to see with the, the little light up thing. So they, um, she released this size at market, I believe. So in the fall, she released the little six inch, I believe is what that is. Yep, it's a six inch square is what it'll do up to. So it did, it was perfect for a five and a half. And, um, and then just recently she released bigger ones. So she has a six by 24 and I think a six by 12. Um, they're, so, they're not cheap, but they are really good for being able to see your lines better. So if it's something that you struggle with, it is it is not battery operated as in you you don't change batteries you charge it yes. like you would your phone yep so super, yep and it comes with a little easy. charger and everything so um yeah i think it's a really it's a great tool especially if you have issues with your site or just sometimes the ruler numbers are just really hard to see like it's just super nice um we also uh, we were joking recently about how like if you sew at night this is kind of the thing is you could almost sew completely in the dark and nobody would wake up it wouldn't oh bother gosh. anybody <laughs> I, I, I feel like that's cosmic like cosmic bowling we could do cosmic, yes, sewing. cosmic sewing exactly so that's the glow glow ruler from carolina moore and um I know it's available on her site, but a lot of quilt stores have it now. I've seen it in a few places. So I think actually Casey Maker had it um, on her little uh, thing. This was something. One more thing I wanted to show you. So on all of this, I sewed with the stretch needle. This is something we've talked about before is which needle do I use? Because you're, you're, we're mixing um, substrates. We're mixing cuddle and cotton. Which one do we use? This machine, I've done all of the quilting with the stretch needle. So the 9014 stretch, like I would normally use for quilting with cuddle. And you saw how it all turned out. It was beautiful. This is the one that I did on the other machine. And I used a universal needle. Do you see those skip stitches? Oh my gosh. That's a, that's a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. That's supposed to be a zigzag. No, no universal needle. Just, just say no. So just say no to the universal. It did not work very well. Um, Mostly I left it there because I was like, oh, that's a good, a good demonstration. And I thought like, oh, I needed to get it done. My other machine had um, dark thread. So that's why I used the other machine with the other needle and it did not work as well. So use the 9014 stretch needle with all of the cuddle. It worked beautifully. I've had no issues with it. All right. Whew, that was a lot. Drinking, Thanks guys. Drinking from a fire hose. Today. Wow. All right. So again, we have a whole bunch of uh, links that hopefully got up in there about how to baste your quilt, how to do the circles and squares, how to do some long arming. I think in that long arm video, it, long arming video, it's from our, <laughs> it's from like three years ago. It's in our old house. It's kind of fun to watch. Um, and that is with the Cunique that we got from Cali Quilt Cooks. They sell them and uh, it works really well. And I think that we did some talking about the other quilts that I was working on too. So I think there's a whole bunch of quilts. Hawk's first mid arm. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> so, Even though it's actually yours. Yes. <laughs> so the other thing is I wanted to let you know we have a new pa uh, pattern out, which would actually be really good for this sort of project. So this is the patchwork panel blanket. That This middle part, you do it with the panels that we have that are printed that way. So they, they're printed to look like quilt squares, sort of like the cheater there. Okay, and you could absolutely straight line quilt those. And if you do that, you add a backing behind it and quilt that onto your backing. 
it will um, have more heft. So that's one thing we've done with a couple of things. I wanted to do it with my, I never remember that blanket that I made, the big America the Beautiful, what is it called? Oh, um, I'm sorry, I got I checked out. Um borderline uh home of the brave home of the brave the home <laughs> of the brave quilt that middle part is a digital cuddle so it's a thinner cuddle and the rest of it is luck so putting a batting behind that and quilting that is absolutely beautiful and adds some heft to it and kind of balances out the blanket so try that sort of machine quilting works well this is a great pattern to start with it is on the website as well as the circles and squares on saturday we're going to continue talking about quilting but we're going to move it into patchwork Patchwork. Now I can bring out the pillow. So you might remember we did this guy. That Ugh. is a beast Ugh. of a pillow. It it's, weighs, it's a big it weighs like pillow. 30 pounds. It, yeah, <laughs> it does. It's it's like, you know, my weight training for today. Um, <laughs> so we did this one. When did we do this? Like November, I think, of last year. We did a tutorial for this. And on Saturday's class, we're going to talk about some of the techniques that are used for that. So and that the, is... That is a block barn, block design, barn design pillow. Yeah. So when she says pillow, she means a big pillow. When we do the pillow on Saturday, we're gonna do the churn dash pillow. I'll let you show that. Okay, so we're gonna do this little pillow here. You could also just make a bunch of these and make a quilt out of it. But we're gonna talk about how to do that. And Lisa, one of our cuddle ambassadors, will be there with Pat Burke and Michelle Hall. And the three of them will teach you all about piecing with cuddle. So there are a bunch of things. We have a couple of other pictures, if we could throw those up there, Jeremy, of the things that you can do. Once you learn this, like you can do anything. This is a drunkard's path quilt, which is beautiful and absolutely all made with cuddle. And then we have another one that is another patchwork. And I can't remember who this pattern was, but this is done patchwork style. So just like you would make any other quilts, except there's a few little techniques you'll want to learn. So if you come on Saturday, we will be doing that. So the classes are live and they are on Zoom and there should be a link that you can click on to get to it, to sign up. And um, once you sign up for that Sew Together Saturday um, newsletter, then you'll get information every month when we do them and you'll get the supply list and the link and the link will be the same every month. So if you have come once before, it's the same link this month. So just keep joining us. It'll be the third Saturday of every month. We have these um, live sewing workshops and you'll, you know, you'll get to see some of our cuddle ambassadors and they'll teach their skills, their tips and tricks for it. I will be there to watch and enjoy with you and probably sew along as well. And it should be very fun. So I hope that you can join us for that. Um, okay, I think that was all of the things that I had to share with you guys. My so goodness. much, so much. Um, but we will be back again in a month. We're gonna do applique next month. That'll be very fun. So come join us the second Tuesday of the month. Next week we'll have a release and the fourth Tuesday we'll have a release too. So join us on the page and you'll be able to see some more things that deal with quilting and cuddle. So we're gonna talk about it all month and then we're gonna start celebrating by posting our cuddle backed quilts. Cause now hopefully you feel accomplished. You can do it. You're empowered. You're empowered. Yes. Um, Okay, so we should have winners. Let's see if we have winners. Because <laughs> we will have three winners. There they are. And they are Leanne Nanny from YouTube, J Jade Lacombe, and Don Feller from Facebook. So Leanne, Jade, Don, please email us, info at shannonfabrics.com. Send us your mailing address and your phone number. It's very important. We will reach out to you again if we don't get your phone number. So just give us that information in the beginning. So give us your mailing address, your phone number, and we will send a kit off to you to say thank you very much for watching Sew Together Tuesday, for sharing it with your fellow sewing friends. Um, all right, is that it? Are we done? We're done. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. Oh, we're not quite done yet. Uh -oh. Two more things really quick. Whoa. We are going to be teaching. So we're going to be up at Celtic Quilter in Omaha on April 5th and 6th, I believe. And then we will be at Red Roxy Quilt Co. in Decorah, Iowa the next weekend. Both of those are retreats. So you can come spend two or three days with me sewing all the cuddle stuff. And it will be very, very fun. You can check out the information for those on the respective stores websites. Okay, so go ahead and check out Red Roxy uh, QuiltCo.com and CelticQuilter.com. And you'll be able to find information. I've also posted those over in the I Love Cuddle group, which you should definitely join too. So I think that's it now.
We'll see. I don't know. I'll probably post more later. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Happy sewing.